Hey everyone, this is Jordan Goldmeyer with Excel TV with an all new episode of Friday Fire. You can see my digs have changed, actually moved to Brooklyn. So here we are in my basement apartment. Maybe we'll do something about the lighting here soon. But before we do that, let's talk about two great ways we can speed up a spreadsheet. So the two tips I have coming for you actually come from spreadsheets I've worked on in common areas that I think people have trouble with. So if you want to learn two tips to speed up those spreadsheets, stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. We'll see you in one second. Welcome back. This is Jordan Goldmeyer. Now here what we have is a spreadsheet with a series of formulas on it. So this is actually inspired by spreadsheets I've seen over the years, and I'm often asked when I consult, how do you speed things up? So what I update when you make changes in Excel, so a change might be a volatile action as we would call it, and a volatile action is resizing a cell, row, column, changing a value, deleting something, changing a conditional format, really just very typical uses of Excel and volatile formulas are ones that update all the time. So a sum formula may not update all the time, but a formula like now or today, for instance, today, that will update it all the time when you make updates to the spreadsheet. Why? Well, it makes sense, right? Because if you're using Excel and the day changes, you'd want it to automatically reflect that. So it makes sense with these functions. We're not really complaining about that part of the functionality. But what I often see with many different spreadsheets is the use of volatile functions that are far too much that are unnecessary. So what I have over here is I have a series of dates that are just randomly set, and then I have a whole bunch of kind of complicated columns that are using now in it. What we have here is a series of uses of dates and now nows specifically, and these are things that I see in models. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go to D1. I'm just going to, let's do 1 plus. I'm just going to pick one of these here. You see it takes a second, and that's really what I want to do for this example. Give it a small amount of calculating time. If you have ever built a complicated model and you add formats, other tabs, things that do other things, you know that this actually adds up very quickly. So what I want to show you is that you can make things a lot more simple and a lot easier to understand and you can reduce the amount of volatile functions that we're using here. So we have now and we're using it, let's see here, I'm using it across 47 columns. If you can see down below, I'll hit control shift down and now you can see there's 95,000 about so 96,000 if we round up um, if we want to be generous to ourselves so um, you can see that and that's a lot of use of, of that function so can we reduce it down to one well we certainly can what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to cell B1 that has our date in it and I have the today here that sets that date now one thing you might notice over here is I've given a name which is model.currentdate you can name it whatever you want if you wanted to change that name or you wanted to start a new name, you can go to cell B1, hit Name Manager. I've made it model.currentdate, but we're going to go ahead and just hit Delete and redo that. For the sake of example, I'll just type in model.currentdate here. I'll hit OK. OK, and so what that does is it allows me to reference that date whenever I want within the spreadsheet. So what I want to do here is now replace all the instances of now with that. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go to Calculation Options. We're going to set it to Manual like that. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to go to Find and Select. I'm going to hit Replace over here. We want to find all instances of now. You can see it's coming up. And we want to replace it with model.currentdate. So I'm going to hit Replace All right here. And we'll just give it a second to make all of its replacements. All right, so I took a took a small pause there because we made a lot of replacements. So this example took a little bit to, t of time to replace. And, and yours may take some time to replace too. You can see that it replaced a lot. But just note that that replacement is actually going to drive a lot of improvement for you. So I'm going to hit OK here. We'll hit Close. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back up to Formulas. I'm going to go to Calculations, Options, just make it automatic again. You can see how much faster that, in fact, was. All right, and so the next trick I want to show you involves getting rid of those pesky Excel spreadsheet errors. So what we have here is I have an invoice amount, and it's waiting for me to put units in. But because I haven't put any units, we have a div 0 error. This is a very common one, the div 0 error. This is one that often happens when people haven't filled in information. And there's also NA and value errors and ref errors. NA and value coming when uh, certain functions haven't been written correctly. And... Uh, rough errors happen in copying and pasting. In any case, a lot of these errors just sit outstanding on a spreadsheet. And many people don't know that if you don't get rid of them, they'll stay there uh, forever. But not only that, they'll slow your spreadsheet to a halt. So there's really two ways you can get rid of an error, right? So the first one is just to look and see if there's a better workflow that doesn't generate it. The other way I would suggest is using if error. So if error 
replaces the old is error. It used to be you had to write if is error and then say what happens, are true or false. If error just allows you in that first argument to try out what you want to try out. And if there's an error, you can put something else. So in this case, I'm just going to put quotes. So I'll hit enter there, and that gets rid of them. So that w is a way to speed up the spreadsheet. Now, often our errors are not really as obvious or as well known. So what you can do here is you can go to the find, go to special, and you can click formulas, get rid of everything that's not an error, and hit OK. That's one way to, to find an error. The other way that I really like that I often recommend because it has so many other things associated with it is you can go to File, Options, you can go to Add-ins. Then down below here where it says Excel Add-ins, you're going to go click Com Add-ins like that. Now, if Inquire is not checked on yours, you're going to go ahead and hit check it and hit OK. It's already checked on mine. And what I can do is I can click Workbook Analysis. It's going to say um, you need to save it. That's OK. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Great name, right? Test. <laughs> Make sure that we delete that at the end. So I'm going to hit work, work, Workbook Analysis here. We're going to give it a second to do that analysis. OK, so your workbook analysis has been completed. It always takes just a little bit. What you can do is you can go in here, and you can actually see a lot of different pieces of information about your spreadsheet. So you can check out all your formulas. You can see how many name constants there are, how many date time values. The one I'm most interested in is the one that says with errors. And you can see here, it tells you where it is and what the value is. And you can always just export it if you'd like. I'm going to hit Cancel on that because I don't really need it, but I love Inquire, so you should be using it. You can click on the Workbook Analysis button, and that will tell you everything you need to know about the spreadsheet. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us for Friday Fire. Make sure to check us out on Excel.tv for free Excel tips, tricks, and more. Check us out on Twitter and also on Facebook. Find us on social media. Drop us a line and say hi. We're always interested. If you have tips and tricks to share and you want them featured on one of these episodes, reach out to me, Jordan at excel.tv. Until next time, keep on excelling.